How's it going and welcome to Villains Voiced, a series where I go over your favorite villains that you love to hate. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at Valindra Shadowmantle, a person who I truly believe is at the heart of this adventure. But before I go into anything major, I must warn you that there will be spoilers, so players that plan on playing in Tomb of Annihilation, do not watch this, but DMs that want edit insight on how we can roleplay this fine individual, let's go ahead and dive right in. And here she is, Valindra Shadowmantle, in her beautiful elven form. However, as we know, that is not her true form. She is in fact a lich. She is an undead who has amassed a mass amount of power, and in fact, she is here on a mission. She is here in the jungles of Cholt to look for the Soulmonger. She was sent here by one of the most powerful individuals in all of Thay, Zaz Tam, and she is working directly for him. She herself is not a red wizard, but of course, you know, she's working for them, so... So oranges and apples, really. She is here in the jungles of Cholt because she is on orders to study the Soulmonger. She doesn't want to destroy it. And why is that? Well, quite frankly, liches like collecting souls. And as of right this second, there is this death curse going on, and souls can't really be collected. So it would be a kind of important thing to discover what this Soulmonger actually is, how it operates, and how possibly to use it in the future. She has arrived in the jungles of Cholt and taken over the heart of Ubtau as her demands. Mind you, this is not her lair. She has not been here long enough and not solidified her power to make it a lair. But, of course, this lich doesn't need a lair. She's already powerful enough and she can handle any level party in this campaign. It really doesn't matter if this is her lair or not. When your players make their way to the heart of Uptau for the first time, they're going to see this massive floating rock that appears to be bleeding. When your players make their way to the base of the heart of Uptau, they're going to see that, for most groups, most people don't have a way to climb 100 feet in the air. Valindra Shadowmantle is going to look over the precipice and shout out, Hello down there. Who are you? And what brings you all the way out here? She's going to be shouting this, and your players are presumably going to have to shout back whatever response they have. But she's going to get tired of this, and she's going to simply say, Perhaps we can continue this conversation face to face. Give me but a moment. And at that point, she's going to go ahead and wave her hand and summon forth an arcane gate, which is going to connect the ground with the inside of the heart of Ubtau. She's going to make her way inside, and people can go ahead and make their way into the gate and have a face-to-face -face conversation. Once inside, your players are going to see the heart of Ubtau, this hollowed-out little cavern, which has been made into a makeshift laboratory and workplace. She is going to announce to the party, Welcome to my temporary abode. I am Valindra. Now, who are you all again? Your players are going to obviously be curious about why this one elven individual is living here in the middle of a rock. And after some talking, she will go ahead and say, I am here to find and study this so-called soulmonger. Whatever this thing is, it is clearly powerful and worthwhile investigating. I know most people want this thing destroyed, but you must understand. Understanding what this is and how to prevent it in the future is tantamount to the survival of our very souls. Now your players are probably going to presume that she is powerful because she was able to cast an arcane gate and if your players explore around a little bit in this area they'll actually be able to find a teleportation circle. So they might get curious and ask if she is working for a group or working alone, in which case she will go ahead and reply, I have some powerful allies scattered around the world and I have some underlings scouring the jungles as we speak. So far, nothing, but I feel as if that will soon change. As your players are talking, they're probably going to understand that, hey, maybe there's a symbiotic relationship to be had here. She wants to find the Soulmonger, and presumably your players want to destroy the Soulmonger. So they're probably going to go ahead and try and strike up a deal, in which case she'll go ahead and say, Certainly. I want to find this as much as anyone. Let's help each other out with this, shall we? Now, your players could go in and approach this in many different ways. They could suss out that she is not all that she seems. Maybe your players recognize that she has an illusion about her. Maybe your players recognize that she is clearly not in the up and up. 
Maybe your player is a suss out that she is not as forthcoming as she says she is. In which case, she will just go ahead and drop the charade. She will simply say, I work for the most powerful person in the Red Wizards of Thay. My job is to find and study the Soulmonger. I am close to finding the location, which I believe to be in the lost city of Omu. Now, we can work together and keep this relationship amicable, or you can stand in my way. I'd rather us be on friendly terms. Now, there's going to be some groups who think that there is going to be a point of no return. You can't work with Red Wizards of Thay. They are evil. And if that is the case and they attack, she will simply not kill them. She doesn't want to kill the party right now. She wants to use them for later. In which case, she is going to simply say... Killing you now would be worthless. I'm sure we'll meet again before this is done. In which case, she's going to simply make her way over to the teleportation circle and disappear. Now, however these negotiations go down, Valindra is going to use the party to her advantage. Whether that is her simply forming an alliance, or her using the party later on by scrying on them, she is going to get what she wants. She's going to use the party and have them go all the way to Omu. Now, something I would strongly recommend is if an alliance is formed, then Valindra hands the party a device which allows her to scry on at any given point. And that is going to let her catch up to the party at any given point. And in which case, once your players arrive to Omu, she is going to be right there with them. But if the party didn't agree to an alliance or they straight up attacked her, she will go ahead and simply begin trying to scry on them, whether that be from her own devices or if she is in fact using some of her underlings to follow the party. Eventually, the Red Wizards are going to get to Omu, and in fact, they are going to beat the players to the punch. Because Valindra has the ability to teleport, she is going to move all of her forces into Omu first. And that is, of course, when your players are going to walk in and see in Omu that the Red Wizards were ambushed. However, Valindra is not amongst them. Not yet. She was too busy doing something else. Once your players have explored around the city of Omu and found some of the puzzle cubes, that is when Valindra is going to appear before them. She is going to show off that some of her forces have some puzzle cubes, and she is going to strike up a bargain. We both have something we want, and we both are going to the same location. Let's work together on this, shall we? If you are running the Fane of the Night Serpent, then she can go ahead and clue them in on some useful information. My agents here tell me that there is a spy in the yuan -Ti lair. Perhaps that is your ticket to success. Any humans amongst you can walk in no problem. The non-humans are going to need something more. In which case she will go ahead and suggest such things as illusion spells and invisibility and etc. Once your players have all the puzzle cube pieces, or if the party has the puzzle cubes and the Red Wizards have the others, she will go ahead and announce, Now that we have all the pieces, I believe you should have the honors of entering first. I will sit back and observe. She is once again using the party. She is going to have them go first, Indiana Jones style. She doesn't want to get her forces killed. She doesn't want to get herself killed. It makes far more sense that she's going to poke and prod the players into the Tomb of the Nine Gods before any of her own forces. Now, obviously, when this happens, many groups are going to be very confrontational, at which point she is going to simply say, I would hate to have to kill you. You seem like you could be quite useful to me. And let's cut to the chase. I promise to invoke a power word against any that dares strike against me. Now, hopefully, with the uttering of such a thing as a power word, your players are going to say, hey, we don't want any part of that. But if your players refuse to back down and they strike out against her, she will not let up. She will show her dominion over them. And in combat, she will say such things as, Power would kill. I have no time for games. It seems you don't value your souls at all, do you? Your bodies will still be useful after you die, don't you fret. What's the matter? You scared? We've only just begun. I will use you one way or another. That is up to you. 
Perhaps I shall disintegrate one of you, and perhaps the others will learn their place. And if some way, somehow, your players are able to destroy this lich, she will go ahead and expout, I will be back in a few days, but I'm sure you'll be dead by then anyway. And that's it. Just a few lines to get us into the mindset of this lich, who is in command of all these red wizards, and is wanting to use the party to stake out what is going on in the Tomb of the Nine Gods. No one knows what's in there. You can't scry in there, and no one that's ever made it their way inside has ever come out. So she wants more people. She wants to throw in as many resources as possible to get this job done. And that can add it to an awesome feeling. Like I previously mentioned, it can feel like an Indiana Jones adventure, where the bad guys are prodding in the good guys to go ahead and scout out the place. And that adds a ton of fun and variety. Your players are pressed up against traps on the front, and they're pressed up against evil wizards from behind. And that is a blast. Do your players use the tomb to their advantage and try and kill the red wizards? Do they simply try and run away and hide? Maybe they try and get the red wizards to go around and explore. Who knows? There is a lot of fun dynamics you can have by throwing the red wizards in to the tomb of the nine gods, just like your party. And if you're running a more meat grinder mode, then this is definitely a way you can introduce characters pretty easily if you just go ahead and say that there is heroes amongst the Red Wizards. Entirely feasible. So go ahead and tell me, how do you use Valinda Shadow Mantle? Is she a controlling, manipulative person? Or is she just someone who sits in the back and does nothing? Is she just window dressing for this adventure? Or do you have her as a prominent villain in this campaign? I certainly think that she deserves the spotlight because she is powerful and she is working for the most powerful person arguably on the planes right now. She is an influential figure and it would make sense that she goes ahead and just takes charge of all of the Red Wizards of Thay around here. And maybe a lot of the Red Wizards resent that. A lot of the Red Wizards don't like the fact that there is someone who's not even a Red Wizard and they have to take orders from them. That adds a lot of fun dynamics and you can throw that in as well. Maybe your players go ahead and start negotiating with some of the Red Wizards and turn on Valindra. And then maybe even later on the Red Wizards turn on the party. There's backstabs on backstabs galore and that could be a blast. So go ahead and tell me how you use Valindra because I want to know. I've used her in all my campaigns and she is fantastic. But that is going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to all my amazing patrons up here. You guys are absolutely incredible. More villains voiced coming soon more other things involved. I can't wait to see what I get up to on this channel because there is a lot coming, I promise you. That is going to do it for me though. Thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one.